Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and you're watching the Edit With Me Monday show. The show where we make editing in Lightroom super, super simple. And also, I just try to make Mondays suck a little bit less by having fun with editing. Now, usually I post videos about specific tools or editing techniques, but today I'm gonna to talk about my entire Lightroom workflow, right from the beginning when you take a photo to how I catalog it, how I edit it, and how I export it. I hope that this is gonna help you guys, especially if you're beginners or if you've been using Lightroom for a while and you've just gotten into some pretty bad habits, hopefully this will be an eye opener to how I organize my workflow. So let's get into it. So when you open up Lightroom, make sure you are in this library module. And before we talk about importing your photos, I do quickly want to mention a bit about file type. When you are out shooting your photos, make sure you shoot them in raw file format and that you are shooting in the highest resolution. I know that you guys have probably heard this a thousand times before, but if you wanna be editing your photos, you wanna store all that data, you wanna have lots of dynamic range, and to do that, you have to be shooting your photos in raw. Um, so just make sure that you're doing that and you're gonna have a much more fun and an easier time when you're editing your photos. So the next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and import our photos. So we're gonna go over to this import tab here and click that. Now you're gonna to wanna to look on this left-hand side. This is gonna have all the different sources of where you can import photos from. So this can be uh, photos that you already have on your computer. This could be photos from a hard drive. Usually it might be an SD card that you are importing directly off of. In this case, I have these photos just saved on a hard drive, so I'm going to go ahead and click that workflow tutorial photos. I actually usually like to just import uh, my whole collection unless, you know, if this was like 100 photos, I would go through and, uh, and pick out just the few. But in this case, I'm just gonna pick them all and uh, we are going to go over to here and now I'm going to pick the folder that I want to put these in. Now, because I'm working off the hard drive, I am going to go to this sample exported photos folder just to show you guys, but this could be a folder that you keep um, all of your work-related photos, travel photos, uh, lifestyle photos, however you wanna organize it. Um, I am gonna be having a video very soon on organization, so that should help you guys out as well. So I'm gonna put it in the sample exported folder and I'm going to rename it uh, 2019, the month, and I'm just gonna say yellow outfit. Make sure that you do actually name your photos and, uh, and the folders so that you can find them later. And now I know exactly where on my hard drive I am saving these photos, so if I wanna access them later, I can do that very, very easily. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click import. So now that I have my photos imported, I need to go ahead and review and select the photos. This is where I kind of pick which ones I really like, which ones I'm gonna spend time editing, and which ones I wanna work with, or which ones are just trash and I just wanna delete and never look at again. So usually when I'm actually at the shoot, I kind of just take a mental note of ones that I really, really liked, and I know that these sitting on the steps ones are probably my favorite, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and we'll still go through some of the other ones here. So if you click uh, this, this sort of little big box here, it will show your photos one at a time and you can go through. And what I like to do is I just like to flag my favorite photos and you can do that um, by pressing the P key on your keyboard. So, I mean, that one's okay. These are kind of cool. Um, that's a cool one. So you can kind of go ahead and just, you know, anyone that I kind of like, I will flag. So I like that one, I like that one. See, I, I knew these were the ones that I was gonna like. I don't like how much this shows of everything. Um, a close up might be nice and, and this is a, a fashion related thing. So I do have some detail shots in there just to show those specific elements off a bit more. All right, so once I have those favorites selected, now I like to narrow it down even more and just really zero in. So if you go here and you click filter, click the flag, what it's gonna do is just show you the photos you flagged. So this is sort of like a narrowing down process where we go through everything, we got our favorites, and now we go through our favorites to really pick, you know, like the winners, the top ones that we're gonna do. So now when I actually can compare these three, 
it's pretty obvious that I'm gonna I'm gonna unpick that one. So what I do is I press the U key that unflags something. So once I actually could compare, I didn't like that one as much. Now these two, I like them both. But I'm still gonna leave them both flagged, but this one I think is more fun. And uh, I'm just gonna keep both of those ones just so I have the detail. So now that I know which photos I wanna actually edit, I'm gonna hop over to the develop module to edit the photos. You have to be in this module to get all of the editing capabilities in Lightroom. Now, depending on my mood or the vibe that I'm going with for the specific photo, sometimes I'll start with a preset, sometimes I'll just start editing. Um, it kind of just depends. Sometimes I need inspiration and I wanna get some ideas or sometimes I've shot some photos similar to this, so I'll go and start with a preset that I built before. So in this case, sometimes I just kind of go over them a little bit. Um, I'm actually kind of like the vibe of, of this one from another shoot that I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, and start with that as the base. Now, as I have mentioned before, a preset is not one and done. Once you put it on, there's lots that you have to do to get your photo to where you want it to be. So in this case, um, this one is uh, very, very warm. So I'm gonna bring down the temperature cool it off a little bit. Um, also, this photo is a bit overexposed, so I'm gonna bring down the exposure on that um, quite a bit. I'm gonna bring up those highlights, because I don't know why I had that so intensely low on the preset. So bring, I'm gonna bring down the exposure quite a bit on this one, actually. So that is looking better. The next thing that I do is I kind of just scroll down in the order that Lightroom shows you all these panels, and I kind of just make any adjustments that I want to. The one thing I want you to know is that you don't have to do something with every single slider. Um, don't feel like you have to. That's a, that's a pretty easy way to start over editing. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit on the clarity. Um, and I'm gonna bring those shadows down and I am gonna bring that down even a little bit more. So uh, there's our before, which was really overexposed actually. And now here's what we're kind of working with. Um, so in the tone curve, I like, I like this, what I had for, for it um, on that other one. Into the HSL. Now, when you're working with um, fashion photos or product photography, depending on the style of the shoot, you might have a lot of creative liberties, but other times if it's gonna go online or be on a product page or anything to do with you know, actually selling a product, then the colors have to be true to real life. So as you're editing it, just make sure that it is um, you know, staying true to the real color of the actual item because you don't want to be misrepresenting something in any way. Now, I'm in the HSL panel. This is where I can edit color. And in this one, obviously, we have these awesome primary colors in this photo. We have the yellow jacket, the blue pants, and then the red purse over here, and also red in this, in this brick wall. But I don't really wanna highlight that as much. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, on the red, I'm actually gonna bring up the saturation, and I'm gonna bring up the luminance as well. And everything that you do, you have to pay attention to how it's affecting this, because as I did that, it also brought it up on uh, Gwen's lips here. So you just wanna make sure that um, everything that you're doing is, uh, is exactly how you want it to be. The yellow I'm actually pretty happy with. I might just bring up the luminance on it a little bit since that is like the main, the main piece of the show. And then I'm also gonna bring up the luminance in the blue. Just again, I want that to shine a little bit more. And the luminance in that red, we'll just maybe bring that down a little bit and bring down that saturation a bit. Next thing is into the detail panel. I do usually always add some sharpening to my photo, uh, maybe not that much. One thing that you wanna do is hit the Option key or Alt if you're on PC and click this and then you can actually see what it's sharpening. So you don't wanna sharpen your entire photo. You just wanna be dragging this to the end and sharpen those refined edges. So I think somewhere around there. So again, that's holding down the Option or the Alt key and then keep that held down and drag that. Next, I do usually like to have a bit of color noise reduction in my photos. I just think that it makes everything look a lot crisper. Now I'm gonna go over to lens corrections. Now part of this preset was to add a little bit of that pulled look to the photo. This is totally a personal preference thing, so it totally depends if you like it or not, but I kinda like how it draws the focus into the center of the photo. 
Now we're gonna go into the transform tool. This isn't something you're gonna use on all your photos, but something that you have a very clear, direct sort of line in your photo. I like to use it, so on this brick wall, I'm just sort of making it totally eye level and totally straight in this photo. Now, going into the effects panel, uh, vignette is something that you could definitely do a lot of if that's the look that you want. I don't really want that look here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit just to kind of draw your eye again to the middle. And then you guys know by now, I, I always love to add grain in my photos. I just think it kind of has a really interesting kind of cinematic look, so I make it really rough and then add in a bunch of grain there. Now I'm gonna go into the camera calibration. I haven't done a video on this yet, but if you guys would like me to do a video on this panel, let me know in the comments down below and I will do that. You can kind of make some big adjustments to your photo here. And I find in this photo now there is a bit too much red happening. I like the idea of the red, yellow, and blue, but the red is sort of taking over. So I'm gonna bring down the saturation on the red in my entire photo and I think it's just gonna give it a bit more of a cohesive vibe and help bring the eye to the middle, to the yellow outfit. Uh, that's what I want to be the focus of this photo. Now, once I'm done going through all of those panels, I kinda just like to take a look at my photo and see what still needs to be done, what I might have missed with it. In this one, I'm gonna bring those highlights and those whites down again, uh, just to kinda level that out a little bit. Maybe add in a bit more contrast to this image, bring down the black point there, just so that there, again, there's a bit more contrast happening in the overall image. And then I like to go into the adjustment brush and just do any kind of little polishing that this image needs. There's lots of little things that I would do if I was spending more time on this edit, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of go over the clothing. I'm gonna bring up the texture and just really enhance that. I'm doing that because, again, that is the main focus of the image, so I just kind of want that to be sharp and to stand out and to really look very interesting. Some other things you could do is you could go and do iris enhance on the model face, you could go into all those kind of things, you could go into the flowers a bit more. There's lots that you could do with this. But for now, let's look at the before and after. So you can see we did a lot with this photo. And this first one, definitely, I admit it, it's overexposed. Um, it definitely is. But you can see how we could definitely save that photo and do a lot with it during the edit to kind of really bring it to life, to show those colors and create a really interesting image. Now, once you're happy with your edit, we can go ahead and export it. Now, if you wanna export multiple photos, you can go ahead and just hold the shift key and then click through all of your photos. You can also select them one by one by holding down the command key and you can unpick or add them in. Then you would just go ahead and right click, export, and that's how you would export multiple photos at once. But for now, we're just gonna export the one photo, so click it right click and go into export. There we go. And it's gonna bring up this module here that's gonna give us all of our options of how we can export this photo. The number one thing that you should definitely do is pick a place to consistently save your exported photos to. I know that this is super boring, but you don't wanna just be constantly saving to the desktop or wherever you're working at the time. You want to pick a place and save your photos there so you can always find them. I do this with an external hard drive so that I'm not saving those photos onto my computer and slowing it down. And then I just always save it into the same place. So here I'm gonna save it into this exported folder, but you can make that whatever you want it to be. So you're gonna go ahead and choose that folder and that is where they will be saved. Now I'm gonna go ahead and name that folder. So I usually do the year and the month and then the name of whatever it is, whether it's um, a trip, a special day, or a client. I just title that there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go over here and click rename to. Otherwise, it's just gonna save your photo as this series of numbers and you'll never be able to find it again. So rename to and then name it. I usually name it something similar to the folder name. And then at the end of that, what it's gonna do is it'll give it a number. So if you are exporting multiple photos, they will all be numbered and it'll be really easy to catalog them all. 
So now we're gonna scroll down to the actual file settings. Now, what settings you use is really gonna depend on where this photo is gonna go, and Adobe has tons of information on the best export settings. Depending if you're printing your photo, you're putting it online, you're sharing it on social media, it all really depends where this photo is going to go. So you have to figure that out first. These are gonna go online, they're just gonna go on a website, so I'm gonna export them for web. So you wanna make sure that you have it picked as a JPEG, that's best for online. You can export the quality at 100%. It's gonna make it a bigger file, so if you wanna have a smaller file, you can definitely bring this down. I wouldn't go below 80% though, just to keep the quality there, but I think anywhere between 100 and 80%, you're gonna be in the safe zone. Next, I go to resize to fit, and I usually do do this at 180. I do that because uh, this is usually the number that is perfect for Instagram, where it won't compress it, and this is gonna be great online. It's gonna show up well on phones, on websites. It's just a good place to go with that. Now, in terms of sharpening, I usually don't do this, but I know a lot of people definitely suggest it. So you go to sharpen for screen and make sure the amount is on low. Like I said, I don't normally do this, but if I export a photo and it seems like it's sort of been compressed weird, I will go forward and try this just to see if it looks better, and sometimes it really does. So this is all just a matter of preference. The last thing here is just the metadata, and um, I usually just take out the location information just so that that information isn't readily available. And then other than that, that is it. So you're just gonna go ahead and export your photo and you're done. So I hope that gives you a window into my Lightroom editing workflow. If you like that workflow, if you feel like, hey, that might work for you, be sure to like this video. And if you totally disagree with me, if you think my workflow sucks and you have a better one, feel free to dislike this video and leave your uh, workflow in the comments down below. I think it'll be interesting. I wanna see, I wanna see what you got. So you can leave that down below. As always, subscribe if you are not already, and I will see you guys next week. Peace out.